Aqui no Papo de Cinema nós vamos conversar hoje com o produtor norte-americano Doug Limbach, que está aqui para falar sobre Another Forever, uma produção internacional estrelada pela brasileiríssima Daniela Escobar, pelo colombiano Malo Moreno e pelo alemão Peter Kettner. E os três que estão circulando o mundo com um projeto que já ganhou vários prêmios e o Doug vai contar um pouco para nós como é que está sendo toda essa repercussão. Hi Douglas. How you doing? I'm fine. Nice to see you here. Uh, well, let's talk about Another Forever. Uh, how do you get involved with this production? Well, I think like uh, every production, it's a question of uh, a couple of drinks and then people meet <laughs> and get together and yeah. start discussing some ideas. And, you know, um, I spoke with Juan Zapata, the director, and he invited me to be a part. And I liked the screenplay a lot. And I thought that we had a potential here and as I've been living in Brazil for many yeah. years it uh, it was a nice opportunity to finally break into the market with a nice product and something that I thought actually had a future well uh, let's explain a little bit the the job of the producer well as any executive producer does internationally I think the first step in my role in this film was to you know make sure that we had funding and yeah. Fundraising was the first aspect that I was involved in and we basically needed to start funding our filming in both Rio de Janeiro and in Europe. So the first thing I thought was, okay, let's, um, let's try to figure out a pitch and try to find a way to get resources in Brazil, which most people know is very difficult to get, you know, private investors in a project without a lot of government support. You know, I, in my first instinct was risk takers. People yeah. like to invest in the stock market, people like to gamble. To make moves is like a gamble? Uh, no doubt. Yeah. It's a, it's a gamble for anybody because I mean, if you look at films by Tom Hanks, you go on IMDb yeah. and you look Tom Hanks and you see one film where he makes 50 million, another film where he loses 10 million. <laughs> yeah. And that's with a, you know, a, a reference like Tom Hanks. So I think you have to convince somebody because if you tell them they're guaranteed a return, yeah. you know, you're lying and then your next film is not going to happen. Do you get involved in this part of this process of choose the, 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 the actors and the actors? Actually, no. Um, the, the actors, the cast was already decided when I entered the project. Okay. I came in as kind of like, uh, okay, let's take a shot, you know, in the dark and let's, let's invite a new guy that doesn't have much experience, but he knows people. Yes, of and course. Juan came to me and said, okay, this guy could maybe pull this off. So we had a month to get certain resources and I took a look at the project and analyzed the project from a basis of somebody outside of their world because you're not lying, you're not trying to manipulate anybody, you're not trying to tell somebody, oh, invest in this, you know, because you have two types of investors. You have an executive producer that gets 10% of everything he He basically um, fundraises. Yes. And then you have the investor that puts money in as well. And I'm the type of investor, I put money in this project as well. And that right there sells the project to your investors because they know they're not investing with you. You know, they're not investing some, they're not buying vacuum cleaners from you. Yes. They're investing yes. with you and they're believing in a project that you believe in and you're putting money into too. So this makes the project, you know, much more attractive for a potential investor because he's not just putting money into your pocket directly. You're putting money into the project, he's putting money into the project and you're going to watch it grow and he knows that I'm going to battle, I'm going to fight, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to do everything possible you must, to me. Yeah. yeah, because it's, it's my investment, it's their investment, it's everybody's investment. So I think that made the situation a lot easier. Uh, do you in get involved also in this kind of decisions, the artistic oh, process? Yeah, well, I think one of the one of the initial aspects of it was to get investors and get and do the fundraising, but actually after that, yeah, after that, I started participating in the entire process of the locations. I was I was helping with a lot of aspects of our investments of the, the investors' money. Okay, what kind of hotels are we going to go to? In general, you know, you want to get involved in the art. I think this project is a question of you know a collaboration of a lot of people Great. with with kind of a good vision, but open to listening and open to receiving. You have actors, you know, you have actors like uh, Daniela Escobar, who has done many novellas. She's, she's very well known in Brazil. Yeah. You have actors like Marla Moreno, you know, we were in the, at the Bogota Film Festival last October where we won, you know, uh, Best Film Bronze Award. And he was getting attacked in the streets, you know. And then you have Peter, who's well known in, in Germany. So you have a good base. 
I mean, a film is it made from its budget. It's made from its quality. Uh, let's talk about the career of the movie. You said to me that the first place that you, we went with the, this project was Cannes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we had a, we basically, we participated as a work in progress yeah. at, um, uh, basically, it's called Guadalajara Goes to Cannes, which is basically a parallel for works in progress to do a screening there. And Guadalajara does a selection of the best films in North and South America, yeah. and then they send them to Cannes, basically. And Cannes, they chose five films to be in Cannes, and we were fortunate. Only five? Yeah, only five films. And we were fortunate enough to be one of them, and we did a screening during the March to Film. And after that, we went to Bogota, Los Angeles, yeah, we, Acolé, yeah, always we, uh, yeah. winning prizes. Yeah, well, basically, um, my idea, and maybe this is, isn't so common, you know, um, is to, get it out there, you know, get your project out there, have people look at it, uh, you know, participate in lots of film festivals from lots of regions. So as you can, as was announced on, uh, how do we say, Papa Juice and Nam as well as uh, <laughs> yes. Zero Water. So at this point, you know, we have five awards winners and wow, we're feeling pretty terrific. good about what, the project that we have. You know, I think one thing that we have to consider that we're making art, but we're also, you know, we need to sell the art. You know, it's not just about um, contracting a, a soccer player yeah. who does, you know, lambretas and <laughs> does lots of, you know, um, uh, uh, pedaladas, but doesn't score a goal. Of, you know, you yes. need a, a player who scores a goal, you know. So I think that was kind of our objective to really, you know, start getting winners and scoring goals and putting ourselves on the map as a film and as a, as a production company. And I think Simone was a perfect example of that. Simone, uh, Juan Zapata's last film, I was the associate producer there. Yeah. Pablo, our, our uh, uh, director of photography, was also on that project. Yes. And that set the base for Another Forever. So I think you need to understand that the art and the beauty of the project is important, but it's not the only thing. Because you're not going to, if, if you contract a player who doesn't sell t-shirts, He's, he's not going to last very long. No. <laughs> well, Doug, thank you very much and congratulations about Another Forever. It's nice to be here. Nice. Thank you. Thank you.